So I don't know if any of you have ever had this issue, but this is my rain barrel, which gets water that just falls from my roof right up there, falls down to here, and there are five earthworms in here that are alive, moving around. And as you can see, this is a barrel that is in no way touching the ground like in a way that an earthworm could get inside of it. They could not penetrate the bottom, yet somehow they end up falling into it from the sky. Do they just fly in the rain? Do they come with the rain? Because this is not the first time it's happened. I mean, if there's a possibility that I set one of my flats here, like for a few seconds when I was moving it, because what I'll do is like I'll put the last one up here, I'll close the cold frame, and then I'll bring it inside. This rain happened in the middle of the night last night, so they would have had to fall in there last night before the rain came. But that would have been a short time for that many earthworms to fall in there. So every spring, of course, I get some starts going vegetable starts. I've got some brassicas over here, some loofah coming up, um, a little bit of rice that just started coming up above the surface of the soil. And then um, this flat over here is sort of a test flat for older seed that I have. I like to do these little test flats just to check out the germination rates and see how my seeds are doing that are a little bit older. So I have some beets that are from uh, 2015. I have some other seed that's from 2015 as well, um, some lettuce. I went to the Asian market when I was in Cleveland and I, uh, they were selling a bunch of Asian, Asian varieties of vegetable seeds. And um, I didn't bother to look at the dates on them to see how old they were, but um, I can do that. Uh, but I got some chrysanthemums, edible chrysanthemum seedlings and those are doing well. There's an edible loofah that I got from the Asian store here. What do you think, Banj? Huh? Oh. Yeah, you gotta be careful. Those are thorny. It's an Osage. She doesn't like to go too close to these electric fences now because I think she got zapped last year. Dancing Rabbit now has a cow. Or actually, the critters have a cow. But this cow is going to be producing milk for the village now. So we don't have to go down the road to the Mennonite dairy to get milk anymore. Right? You're going to do that? You gonna grow some milk for us? You wanna produce milk and turn our grass into milk? So I'm gonna check out what's going on underneath this low tunnel that I built last year. I planted some uh, lacy lady peas here. And these are the kinds that produce mostly tendrils instead of leaves. And so they will uh, grab onto each other and create this mat. They're like a shelling pea. And then over here, I planted some carrots. Now. Underneath this, I can plant these out here 
and they won't be eaten by rabbits, which is always the problem and the flaw in planting anything out here in the vineyard is that rabbits will eat it. And it also gives it a little bit of a microclimate when it's uh, cold on days like today, and it'll keep it warm in there. So we'll see how that continues to grow. Well, we had a little bit of a scare last night because uh, the weather forecast was that it was supposed to be 31 degrees as the low. And uh, I woke up at like 4.30 last night and it was about 36 degrees. And then about an hour later it was uh, 35. So it was headed down, but I think it w didn't get down as low as it was predicted to be. Unfortunately it didn't because otherwise these grapes would probably have gotten frost damage because they are pretty far unfurled. And uh, this variety in particular is sensitive, but pretty much every grape that would be unfurled this far would get blasted by any kind of temperatures below 32.